They'd be examples of the perpetual dread brought on by effective monochrome in movies. When I say that I want these things, I mean that I want them and I don't want to have to ask again. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that would be scarier in black and white. I've seen this tree before. Yeah, it was on the tape. No, I've been there. For this list, we're focusing on color films that would likely become a bit more agitating if they were viewed in black and white. <laughs> We're not saying these films aren't scary as they are, but rather we're exploring how a different visual approach would heighten the scares. Obviously, we're excluding films that were shot in black and white to begin with. Number 10, It Follows. Look, somebody broke the window. That really happened. But I saw a girl in the kitchen. As one of the surprise indie hits of the decade, this David Robert Mitchell flick scared the bejesus out of most viewers through subtext alone. But with a black and white touch, visuals of a creepy grandma or a bloodied half-naked lady carry even more weight. I need water. Oh my god, I need water. Hey, I'll get you some. No, stay here! This is not a horror film that relies on gobs of red blood splashed against the wall. Nope, it follows gets in your head. It's a psychological study, and when framed in monochrome, even that brilliant disaster piece score becomes creepier, thus building the tension as each character succumbs to the fear. Number nine, Nightcrawler. My motto is, if you wanna win the lottery, you have to make the money to buy a ticket. Meet Leo Bloom. He's motivated, he's business savvy, and he's also a bit deranged. Even so, these are some good qualities to have when you're a freelance videographer in Tinseltown. What if my problem wasn't that I don't understand people, but that I don't like them? Considering that we've seen the usual LA landscapes many times over in cinema, and given that nothing especially stands out thanks to the ominous color palette, Nightcrawler could have adopted somewhat of a Lynchian vibe with sharp black and white visuals. You filmed him. Dying. Hey, that's what I do, it's my job. As the narrative unfolds, Lou becomes increasingly unstable, and nothing says unstable more than a monochromatic image of a man screaming at a mirror. <laughs> Number eight, seven. Do you like what you do for a living? These things you see? No. No, I don't. Darkly lit and with location unknown, this David Fincher classic works just fine in its present form. But there's a certain wildcard factor that could help make the case for black and white. Let's call him John Doe. You know what we're talking about. Wanting people to listen, you can't just tap them on the shoulder anymore. You have to hit them with a sledgehammer. How about this? Seven is a film that becomes a new kind of noir with a specific shade to represent the underlying dread. We're not talking standard black and white, but a tone all its own. He had a gun and, and he made it happen. He made me do it. There's something to be said for the way a character like David Mills is lit, whether he's musing about life with Detective Somerset or coming to a disturbing realization. Black and white perfectly fits the bill across the board, especially for the final reveal. Seems that envy is my sin. No, oh, what's in the box? Not until you give me the what's gun. What's in the f***ing box? Give me the gun. He just told you. Number seven, The Mist. The blood of human sacrifice must come from them. Now here's a sci-fi horror that will break your heart. Directed by Frank Darabont, a man well versed in the art of freaking out viewers, the Armageddon narrative of this film works on a variety of levels. Are those bugs? Not like any I've ever seen. But consider the effects of insect attacks depicted in black and white. In other words, the mist becomes much scarier when the pure horror isn't explicitly shown through conventional genre cliches, but through more creative scare tactics like ominous shading. <coughs> in that final scene, well, it just screams out black and white. <coughs> Interestingly, Darabont included a black and white version on Blu-ray, as that's how he originally intended to shoot the film. You don't have much faith in humanity, do you? None whatsoever. 
Number six, the fly. I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, perhaps she'll die. For the average person, insects are usually equated with horror. And in the realm of cinema, it only makes sense to highlight the various color forms of a scientist turned bug, especially when it's a David Cronenberg production. I'm saying I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it. But now the dream is over. But with such a director, who primarily focuses more on the mindsets of his characters rather than colorful visuals, the fly would become timeless in black and white, as opposed to it currently being an obvious product of the 80s. Sure, you'd have to edit the film differently, but a stripped down palette would elevate the movie from a modern cult classic to an enduring horror production. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Number five, The Omen. Is he ill? Like many films of the 70s, this iconic horror possesses a certain beauty in its color and setting. But come on, the Antichrist calls for black and white. And when you factor in the casting of legends such as Gregory Peck and Lee Remick, well, everything becomes a bit creepier with the absence of tones and tints. The child is dead. He breathed for a moment. Then he breathed no more. Shadowy figures and photographs, scarier in black and white. Extended screaming and death sequences, scarier in black and white. Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. In fact, it's actually surprising the omen wasn't shot in black and white. No, Daddy, no! God, help me! Number four, Jaws. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's a common misconception that beach movies have to be filmed in color. The blue sky, the sandy beaches, the summer styles. But in the case of Jaws, there's something inherently bothersome about witnessing a shark gobble up humans and not actually seeing the blood. There's nothing especially fun about the narrative itself, so when you remove the visual flair from the equation, there's more focus on the characters themselves. That's it. Goodbye. I'm not going to waste my time arguing with a man who's lining up to be a hot lunch. I'm going to see you later, bro. Of course, you don't need black and white to understand the thinking errors of Martin Brody, yet it would bring a certain depth to the film as a whole. I can do anything. I'm the chief of police. Number three, The Terminator. I'll be back. So, there are some types of iconic movie characters that need color to accentuate their personality. But this isn't necessarily so for the T-800 Model 101. He's a stone-cold assassin. And monochrome would actually even heighten his cool factor. You can't do that. Wrong. Looking back on the Terminator, everything holds up just fine. Well, except some of the more obvious 80s styles. So that's where a monochromatic hue could terminate some of the film's retro vibes. <laughs> And with a post-apocalyptic narrative front and center, black and white would only increase the drama while producing more crisp visuals. Run! Number two, Alien. In space, no one can hear you scream, which essentially means that you're isolated from everything, even yourself. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? In Ridley Scott's 1979 horror classic, there's actually not a lot to be seen aside from the obvious physical terror that emerges, that is. Oh, God! So, with Ripley and company obviously dealing with their own psychological and physical drama, the color doesn't necessarily add anything to heighten the tension. This thing bled acid, who knows what it's gonna do when it's dead. Sure, the bloodbath scenes are effective, but it's nothing new. <laughs> And of course, the alien itself isn't the most aesthetically flamboyant of creatures. So there you go. Black and white, baby. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Come to Freddy. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti.
Number one, the thing. Clear. Clear. <laughs> The find of the century in the Antarctic. Some horror films thrive on props and explosive colors, but for The Thing, scored by the brilliant Ennio Morricone, it's all about the pacing. I don't know what the hell's in there. It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. Exteriors and interiors, psychology and physical mise-en-scene, this is another film that channels the horrors of classic Hollywood. And with the reveal of the monster, it's not the color or lighting that scares viewers. It's the effect of just seeing the dang thing. This is pure nonsense. Doesn't prove a thing. I thought you'd feel that way, Gary. So, when viewed through a monochromatic lens, everything becomes a bit more potent and powerful. If you don't believe us, just go watch the 1951 black and white flick. Do you agree with our list? You want me to agree with you and you want me to say, yeah, 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 you're right. Which movie do you think would be scarier in black and white? <laughs> For more jaw-dropping top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.